Hey, super excited when I woke up this morning, I've been waiting for this strawberry release now known as ChatGPT01 to be released today. And uh, so I thought I'd take you through how we are currently using OpenAI and we can take a Figma file and make it real. So we can turn it into a working no-code web or native application. Um, and we're currently using ChatGPT40 trained. And I thought I'll take it for a test run with ChatGPT01 and see how it performs. So just a bit of background about what we're looking to do. So we're going to Figma file and then we convert it into what we call an app definition. And this auto markup feature will automatically use AI to mark it up and then turns it into that app definition. And then the no code engine can turn that into either a working web application or native iOS or Android. So again, this is not code generation. We're using it to generate this app definition, which is interpreted by the no code engine. So our key challenges are that um, when you're taking a Figma file and you mark it up, it takes a lot of time and effort and it's pretty boring. And we hear from our users, designers of using Figma that this is like a real pain. So if you've got a file that's with 100 or 200 screens, it could take you, um, you know, days or, or maybe a week to mark all that up. Now, that's still way quicker than coding it because you don't have to go through the design to dev handover. It just works automatically, but it's still a bunch of effort. Um, the other key thing is that the problem is actually quite a hard problem to solve. So there's so many different applications that are built to so many different design files and formats of design files. So it's a hard thing to explain to AI to be able to deal with that. Um, the other thing that we find is that AI is very unreliable. It's non-deterministic. Even when we're running through with trained models and that, we get a different result from one test to the other. Obviously, the answer is that there's probably more training. But anyway, so I was intrigued to see how we could um, have a look at this. So actually, just before we do that, I'll look at, let's have a look at a Figma file. So this is a Figma file. Uh, we use the Figma simple UI design system. And we started with a, um, with a blank file. And then we used this new feature, uh, which allows us to just come in here and click auto markup. Now, what marking up means is that um, behind the scenes, we've got what we call an app definition. We've got a data model, which is the database behind the application. So this is because we're writing, writing a real application. So it's got a database that's sitting on a server, um, you know, and that's all there. So we've got, for example, over here, a very simple application. We've got products, reviews. Um, we've also got card items and so on. Now, obviously, if you're making the full application, I've just got three screens here. I've got a shop um, homepage, uh, which has got a list of products um, that will be dynamically driven from, from, from the data. And then we've got the product detail page, and then uh, we've got some customer reviews. And then if you want to submit a review, there's a screen in there. So again, we just, for the purpose of this test, we just use a very simple subset of an application to be able to do that. Now, if you were starting manually with Figma, you would come into the screen, um, you'd have to select all the different items. So again, if we look over here, so uh, if we look at this product grid, um, uh, let's have a look. So let's say here's the card grid. So this over here is the list of cards. This is what we call a view. And this is pulling data out of the product database. Now, just behind the scenes, what's sitting over here is we've got a content management system or a database. And this is where all the products live in. So it's all driven from actual real data that's sitting inside a database. So behind the scenes, we're actually using Mongo. Um, and then the web apps are using um, Node.js and React. Um, and then for the native applications, we're using React Native. Um, you don't need to worry about that code. Um, so anyway, sorry, back to the Figma file. So you've got to manually go through and then mark up everything, um, you know, in the screen. So if we looked at it over here, so let's look at the, um, the card. You have to mark up. That's a, this is matching the item on the screen to the element in the database. And then you're also matching up things like actions and so on. So for example, if you clicked on this item, um, if you clicked on this, we'd navigate to the detail page, which is this one, and this would pull it up. And then we've got, you know, pulling up reviews that are specific to this product. So again, there's a, there's a bunch of effort. It's still pretty quick to be able to do it. So I actually asked um, our uh, designer who's a you know, Figma um, guru, and I said, how long would it take you to mark up this application? We're looking at about probably uh, 30 minutes of manual effort for this screen, uh, 30 minutes of manual effort for this screen, and then probably about 10 minutes for this one. Um, and then obviously if you want to do some more sophisticated stuff like the filtering and that, that will probably take a bit more effort. But um, this file over here was actually marked up by um, ChatGPT01. 
So um, using the current preview that was made available today. So we're using that as a model. Now I thought, right, let's compare this and see what the quality is like compared to some of the other models. Now, actually, sorry, just before we do that, I'll show you, uh, this is actually the working application. Um, so we see over here, we go back to the home page. These are the products. And again, these are coming out of the database. Um, so it's pulling out the, the data that, over here, the image, the, the price information, um, and then um, the reviews. So if I go back to the home page, let's go here, let's go to load the jacket. Um, it created some sample data over here, and here's a couple of reviews. And I could create a review and submit it, and we'll end up there. So again, this is an actual working web application with a database. And all we had to do was mark it up in, in Figma. Um, using the Buzzy plugin and then to it. Now, we wanted to streamline that with AI. And what I wanted to do is, is look, at the, look at the actual results of that. So I looked at this broken down to each one of those pages. So three different pages in this application. Again, very simple. So the shop one, uh, the product detail and the submit review. If you were to do this manually, it'd take about 30 minutes on each. And assuming, let's just choose a random figure of, let's say, 50 bucks an hour for somebody to be able to do that. You're probably looking at a um, $58 cost for that and you're probably going to get a quality out of five of five out of five because it's manually done. Now we've been training, we've just started training um, for the beta release of this feature, the auto markup feature. Um, um, we've probably only used three apps at the moment in the training and a whole ton of screens in, as part of those. Um, so it's early days and we're seeing that um, to do the shop screen takes about um, 17 seconds. Um, about a 3.8 score in terms of quality. There's still some manual stuff that you have to do. Um, 45 seconds to do the, do the product detail one and 10 seconds to do the submit review one. So obviously that's a significant improvement of going to spend over an hour doing those three screens. You can literally do that in a matter of seconds and then um, you're getting pretty good quality. So I kind of put an extra 10 bucks in here to, to give you time to actually just go and fix up what's wrong. Now we ran this, so this is with a whole bunch of fine tuning data and that takes a bunch of effort and there's some gotchas there that you currently can't train with image data. So we're doing conversion of images into text and, and um, you know, to give us more data to put into that prompt to get the result. Um, the O1 today, I was really surprised. Just by the way, we try to do this with ChatGPT 4.0 untrained. It just doesn't perform. It's not even gonna make it onto this. We cannot use this. It. probably giving you a one, it doesn't even complete the task. Um, 4.0 Mini trained still doesn't do a good job, so we just can't use it. So 4.0 fine tune for our production system that we're going to get into beta um, soon, that's what we, we're currently using. So it was awesome to see the O1. It seems to be taking a bit longer, so per screen, still again under two minutes to do it versus 30 minutes. It's you know no brainer. It's obviously a lot quicker, but the quality was really really good. It just seems a lot more consistent in the way that it marks up things correctly in that. So um, there's a few gotchas over there, but obviously the cost is different. So we're probably seeing a better result on 01. Um, the cost is obviously um, higher in terms of per uh, million tokens. So we're seeing about a $2.58 for the tokens. And you're still going to need to do some manual stuff to fix it up, but still significantly less time and cost versus doing it manually. And then we ran it through um, 01 Mini. We just weren't seeing the quality. Was, so we were seeing like a three, two, one. So roughly a two, two and a half in quality. Um, it just wasn't marking up things right. Anyway, so very, very excited about 01 and what it's going to do. I can't wait to see what, when it's um, trained. Hopefully the cost will come down and make this more affordable. But this is a great start. Now, this means that we can start to use O1 to help us produce training data, not just actually using it in the product. So that's pretty exciting. And um, thanks heaps for watching. Um, can't wait to share Buzzy Auto Marker for Figma with you where we make it real. And go sign up to Buzzy today. Give it a, a go for the current product. It doesn't have that feature in it today, but it will be there very soon. We'll start releasing it to users. So get on, get on to the product um, mailing list and, and uh, can't wait to hear your feedback. Thanks heaps for watching.